great career that's seen him win more than 600 games. He has a really young group, led by a freshman point guard, John Michael Wright, the reigning Big South Freshman of the Week. Yeah, and Preston McDonald's All-American nominee in his high school days coming from North Carolina, and a guy who High Point is hoping to kind of jumpstart things with their program as this is still a very young group early on in Tubby Smith's rebuild. Along with the freshman right, sophomore Curtis Holland the third starts at another guard position, and Bryant Randleman rounds out a three-guard lineup. He's a freshman. Down low, two forwards, redshirt sophomore Caden Sanchez, and redshirt junior Cliff Thomas makes his first start of the season, adding some size at 6'8", 232. High Point in the black, Boston College in the white. Your referees today, it's a good crew. Ted Valentine, Roger Ayers, and Tommy Morrissey. BC looking to get to 3-0 for the third time in five years. High Point looking for win number one this year. And the opening possession will go to the black-clad Panthers. Out of the Big South Conference in High Point, North Carolina. Coming off a 16-15 and 15 year last year. But they lost their top three scorers from last season. Comes down low to Caden Sanchez. Looking for the cutting right. Ball is out off Boston College's Jay Heath. Eagle defense has been good this year. First two games, opponents have averaged 65 points per game and held the USF to 60 on Sunday. Point guard Bryant Randleman finds right the top score, and that's off the mark. Rebound ends up with Boston College's Derek Thornton. Here's Jared Hamilton. Penetrates into the teeth of the defense and spills it away. There's a turnover on the opening possession for BC. Remember, they did give it away 28 times, even in a winning effort against South Florida. Yeah, and they did especially early on in that game. Bunch of turnovers, high point defense does a nice job collapsing in the paint. That's where BC wants to work with its offense. Into the paint, make things difficult out of a Princeton like set. Comes down low to the first time starter, Thomas, and he loses it out of bounds. It's a turnover for the Panthers. Nice job by Thornton, who got pinned in down low, but held his ground. You know, this is what you're looking for with the point guard coming over here, helping out on Popovich, and then makes a good play to get in front of Thomas and not allow for anywhere to go. One of the things Jim Christian has said about Derek Thornton is that he stepped into a leadership role basically the moment he arrived on campus. You know, you expect that at the point guard position, but even for a guy who's played as much college basketball as him, it can be tough when you're the new kid in town to be a leader. Thornton wants three. Long rebound to Sanchez. And especially when you look at the program, the way you lose a Kai Bowman, who's not just your average really strong player who leaves, but a guy who had such an influence on this campus, on the floor and off the floor. That void is not an easy one to fill. Curtis Holland, the third, well off the mark. Rebound down to Stefan Mitchell. Probably hear that a time or two today. 11 rebounds per game to start the year. Hamilton, 4-3. Jared Hamilton gets Boston College on the board about two minutes in. That's just Holland getting over late there. Hamilton had time to bobble and get the shot up. High point just a little bit slow, rotating defensively. Those are some of the things that Tubby Smith talks about in terms of this young team trying to firm up defensively and really be strong and get out to their spots. Thornton held defense down low again. Goes to the deck and keeps it moving. Hamilton's the beneficiary for two. Those points go to Jared Hamilton but they were earned by Derek Thornton. And really a little thing there, but his dive was really good because he found a way to dive away from contact, but yet still get a piece of the ball to create the turnover. Mitchell the steal, he's fouled. Bryant Randleman reaches in, first foul on high point. Really good work here again. Look at the time that Hamilton has. Just nobody comes over to rotate over for high point. Just a wide open look. There's an assist on that three-pointer to Stefan Mitchell. How about the stat-stuffing game he had against South Florida? And it's what we've come to expect from the junior from Shakopee, Minnesota. Six points, 13 rebounds, and six assists. It's amazing. He basically leads BC in some category every game he's played since stepping on campus, and now he's doing it in multiple categories. Nick Popovich has added the three-pointer to his game this year. Thornton on the drive. Got into trouble. Second Eagle turnover. Well, High Point is trying to take away the lane today on Boston College. It's the second time that you've seen multiple black jerseys collapsing in the paint. The Eagles are going to have to find a way to adjust because that's a lot of the spot that they live both passing and shooting the ball against USF. Jay Heath called for a blocking foul. Ted Valentine down low, very adamant with that decision. 
Yeah, just a tough spot. When you're the smaller body there, not going to get that call all that much. And still a little bit of rotation over. Looked like he was inside the restricted area as well. First foul on Heath and on the Eagles. And Heath makes amends with a steal. The freshman from Washington, D.C. and one. He's had a stellar start to his BC career. This has got to be such a rewarding start for Jim Christian because it's everything he's looking for out of this group. A lot of energy early on trying to come out to a fast start. We've seen it through the last couple of years in some of these non-conference games, games that Boston College feels like they should be the team that wins at home. Get off to a slow start. You let the opponent hang around. Eagles are trying to avoid that fate here today, and they've certainly done it so far. Off to an 8-0 start. Heath scored 18 in his first game of his career against Wake Forest. Thomas missed it. Popovich cleans it up. You live with those shots if you're Boston College. That's three or four already, elbow and outside for high point. Stefan Mitchell through contact. Rewarded for running the floor. And that time the transition beat the high point defense back, allowed Mitchell to get to the bucket. Cold start for high point. Panthers are 0 for 4. Thornton coming right back. Rattles out. Four turnovers and 0 for 4 from the floor to start for the Panthers on their opening eight trips. Just really have not been able to create a shot that they want so far. 0 for 4, and none of the four were really high percentage looks. Open the year with losses to William and Mary and Wofford. Tough shot. It goes. Denny Slay just in off the bench puts high point on the board. Nice job by Slay to match up there. Get himself up and over to be able to hit that shot late in the shot clock. Heath the other way, driving dish, Thornton. Rebound down to Sanchez. Well, it didn't go, but that's the look for Boston College. Everything they're trying to do, make the defense collapse. Good take by Curtis Holland, beating Boston College down the floor. Four in a row for high point. Mitchell, high off the window, missed it. The Eagles started hot, they've missed three straight shots. Yeah, passing it a little bit less on that one. Holland in transition. Offensive board to Sanchez. Plenty of time on the shot clock. John Michael right into the teeth of the defense. Count it! That's his strength. Telby Smith said he ferociously attacks the basket. Mitchell the other way, taps in two. Need those kind of answers if you're BC. High point does a nice job in a possession where they get an extra opportunity out of it. But the Eagles come right down, back down the floor. Don't let that high point run feel like a really extended run. It's already Derek Thornton's third assist. We're 5.20 in. Eight to shoot. Junior Denny Slay up to the freshman right. Long distance, three. Popovich, good positioning inside. That shot works once or twice, but doesn't work every time. Hamilton, tough 10-footer. And the rebound sails out of bounds, bringing us to a timeout on the floor. Boston College scored the first 10. High point with a mini run to get back within four, and then Stefan Mitchell puts BC ahead. 12-6 at the end of the first 5.45.
Officials went back and reviewed a Denny Slate jumper. It was originally a two, now a three. So it's a five-point Boston College lead against the High Point Panthers out of the Big South Conference, where they are picked to finish eighth in the Big South this year. Panthers off to an 0-2 start. Bring back six players from last year, but those six players didn't play all that much. They lost their top three scorers. They're leaning on freshmen like John Michael Wright and Bryant Randleman to really run the offense at the guard positions. Yeah, certainly. And there's a lot of youth on this group, a lot of young players, really just one key senior over this group. So it's going to take some time to try to develop, but it's a really good defensive team from a year ago. Speaking of freshmen, Boston College has entered in C.J. Felder and Julian Rishwain, two freshmen who have contributed to the 2-0 start. Chris Heron is in as well for B.C. Five to shoot. Thornton fouled on his way to the rack. Oh, you mentioned those new guys coming in. As much as Thornton ended up on top of the stat sheet in that win against USF, the Eagles who trailed that game for the first 12 minutes and really struggled with their turnovers, but when they needed buckets after that 12-minute stretch, they went to their freshmen. It was Felder who had a bunch of looks in a row. It was Rishwain who had a couple of threes, each of them with eight points in the first half. Really important performances. So it's all the way down the roster right now for this BC group as much as Thornton has thrived. Thornton step back off the mark. If Felder scored 10, Rishwain 11 in that game for Boston College. Rather, that foul on Bryant Randleman was his second, so he is out of the game. Freshman point guard, John Michael Wright, very quickly back in. Here's Rob Peterson, a sophomore from Charlotte. Jamal Wright into the teeth of the defense. Out for Peterson. Felder finds the rebound. Boy, it looked like Wright was going to have a pretty good look. Ended up with a better look, though, for high point. Chris Herring Jr. penetrating into the corner. Clean look, Mitchell. Short. And that's the part of his game he's looking to get more consistent in. Jim Christian said nobody was in the gym more this year than Mitchell getting those shots up. He has a steal. Trying to find Felder. It's turnover. Boston College is third today. And then Mitchell's called for a foul on the retreat. Now oh, Mitchell's trying to do everything on those couple of sequences right there. And Stefan, who misses a shot, gets a steal right back here and then eventually gives it right back and then picks up another steal nearly after it's knocked out of bounds. Popovich and Heath back in for Boston College. Out go Mitchell and Thornton. You know, BC started so good, they're just one for their last seven from the floor. They started four for five. And that was a big factor against USF, that even when the Eagles were turning the ball over early in that game, they were still shooting it well. So then once they went on a run of not turning it over, those shots fell. But here all of a sudden, not turning it over, but shots are not falling. Long way away. Denny Slay, tough jumper. Left it well short. Rebound to Rishwain. Freshman out of California, Sherman Oaks area outside of L.A. Heron looking to penetrate. Rishwain to Felder, yes! Good ball movement, Heron to Felder to Rishwain. And it took that ball movement to move high point out of the painted area, created enough room for Felder to be able to get in, push the defense back and find the bucket at the rim. First two today for Felder, averaging close to eight points, five rebounds over his first two collegiate games. Peterson throws it away, stops play with 11.58 to go. Boston College has held high point without a bucket for the last three minutes to build a seven-point lead.
Seven-point lead for Boston College after a really hot start. Both teams have kind of dipped into a little bit of a scoring drought. Eagles enter today 2-0, looking to get to 3-0 for the third time in five years. Wins in conference over Wake Forest and on the road against a good South Florida team. So a really solid start for this BC group that lost some big-time scoring from Kai Bowman and Jordan Chapman. Bring back Nick Popovich and Stefan Mitchell and then the newcomers really key this year. We knew Jim Christian was, was high on the freshman class coming in, and it seems like uh, the faith he had in those freshmen who he said really just wanted to compete and play at this level, uh, at least so far, seems like it was faith placed in the right spot because it's been a really strong start for the newcomers. For There's BC. no doubt so far in what this Eagles team has been able to do. And, and you know, the ACC starting in conference games to begin this year, figure for some teams they probably wouldn't like it as much some teams really like it I think for this Boston College team it proved to be a great springboard into the season so far did a lot of things well in that Wake Forest game did not turn the ball over uh, against a team both teams near the bottom of the ACC in the projected preseason poll to get a win like that and parlay in a win against USF in a group that has high hopes for the American this year and, and feels like they have an opportunity to compete at the top of that league. So a couple of really impressive wins to start the year for Boston College. Yeah, it's interesting because I think you could argue that maybe this wouldn't have been a good year for Boston College to start that way when you have so many newcomers. But one of the things that starting with a conference game did is it heightened the focus and the intensity of preseason practice when you knew you had really meaningful games right out of the shoot. And you get to be 1-0 for a long time in the ACC. And, you know, a couple of years ago, obviously it was a big upset win over Duke early in the ACC season, not starting the year, but early in December. And, and that could mean something, being feeling good in the conference for a long time. The Eagles get it into Nick Popovich for the first time today. Keith, deep three. Rebound down to Denny Slay. Yeah, you go through runs over the course of the game, and this is one for Boston College to try to absorb a little bit. You can do it by creating turnovers. Defense has really played with intensity all season long. Rishwain turns it over as it bounced off heat scans. Fourth Eagle turnover. They have forced seven high point turnovers. Yeah, and those are the ones that kind of stand out. You know, we keep saying in 28 turnovers against USF, not all of them are created the same in terms of the magnitude of them, but when you create one, you can't give it right back. And those are the ones that stand out more than you're going to turn the ball over a little bit in the run of play. Freshman Kamari Williams in for the first time out of Sandy Spring, Maryland. Another one of the exciting freshmen who has contributed in both of the first two Eagle games. Curtis Holland the third, a guy Tubby Smith says the best deep shooter on this high point team. Three to shoot. Is from a mile away for Slay. And the rebound down to Felder. I mean, great defensive intensity all the way through. There was just nowhere to go with the ball for high point. Thomas spent most of the time outside of the arc. Felder takes it from Heath. Now it's Heron, long two. And the follow is miss, spills it away to right. John Michael Wright, coast to coast. No. Popovich cleans up Sanchez's tip. Boy, how did he go up and under so many times? Seems like he did that two or three <laughs> times. Somehow keeping the dribble. Tubby Smith loves John Michael Wright. Said he's a guy who's going to be all big south. He has that type of potential down the road and plays with a ferocious intensity for a freshman. Heath too strong. And BC started four of five from the field. They're now two of their last 11. Yet they've held high point without a point for five minutes. They lead by seven. Yeah, we haven't had a point period in over two minutes in this game. And it really settled into a defensive game where there just hasn't been much room to go on either side. Fair to say this has been a low point for the Panther offense. Sanchez from way downtown. Rebound to Felder. I thought you were saving that for the second half. <laughs> well, and you haven't seen a basket in more than five minutes. <laughs> That's the time. That's when you dig, dig deep. Popovich keeps it moving. Heron wide open. No. Yeah, just couldn't quite control the pass from Felder. He got a good look, but that just slight bobble makes it difficult as a shooter where everything in routine matters. Well, if you haven't scored in six minutes, you might as well throw it in like that. Curtis Holland going to the deck, sticks it in. 
And now it's Boston College on the long scoring drought. Eagles haven't scored in nearly three and a half minutes. High points made it really difficult for the Eagles to get to the paint and then work their offense from that point. They really had to create. Felder on the turnaround. DC's missed five in a row, eight of nine. I mean, that's been the kind of looks that the Eagles have gotten over the last few minutes. It's make ball, but it's not high percentage look there for Felder. Oh, great back cut. Holland free off the assist from Slay. Timeout, Jim Christian. High point was 10-0 down. They're all the way back within three. It's an 11-4 run, but it's not really a run. It's an 11-4 prolonged walk down the sidewalk to get back into this one, a stretch of about eight minutes of play. And really, that's the one play that's going to concern Jim Christian, and the reason the timeout comes there is that back cut where the defense is just pulled up too far, nowhere really to go, makes it difficult. But when you have someone with the pedigree of Tubby Smith on that sideline, he certainly knows something about coaching, even with this very young high point team. This is his alma mater, so he's really excited to be back there, a guy who had gone through Kentucky, Minnesota, Texas Tech, and Memphis before coming to high point. And He's gotten his alma mater to really invest in this basketball program. In fact, next year, High Point's going to be opening a brand new facility, about $120 million, Nino and Mariana Keban Arena Conference Center and Hotel. Going to have 4,500 seats, going to have hotel rooms and a conference center space as well. That'll be one of the premier facilities in the Big South Conference. Yeah, and his name still means something in college basketball. He's been at it for a long time. Obviously, it's a little bit of a different job here at High Point than some of his others at Power 5 schools. But what's amazing is just his attitude. You know, we had the chance to talk to him yesterday. You can hear how excited he is about it. Came out on the floor today, fist bumping everyone working today's game, no matter who they worked for, where they might be, high-fiving the fans. He is so excited to be here. And it's got to be a little bit different for him, but something that he's really embraced. And, and that's got to be such a positive for High Point. And recruits can feel that, even at a school. And that's why you start to see more North Carolina kids, which have so many options, obviously, if we're to go to school, uh, choosing High Point. After the foul on Emmanuel Izanabur was just into the game. Nick Popovich ends the Boston College scoring draft and nails both free throws. It's amazing. It's a couple of years ago now as Popovich enters the latter half of his career, but his free throw shooting from his freshman year to what he worked in the offseason between that freshman and sophomore season to get up to a 70% clip has really been impressive. And off to 7 of 11 this season. Mitchell got his hand on the pass and draws the foul. That play right there is Stefan Mitchell in a nutshell. This is a great defensive possession all the way through. Hamilton helping as well, and watch Mitchell knows the right time to peel off, then anticipates the pass and gets in the way. Nicely done. Foul on Rob Peterson, his first fifth on high point. Derek Thornton back in for Boston College. Hasn't scored yet, but has distributed the ball well today. 15 to shoot. Hamilton pressured from behind. Popovich saves the possession. And that's an offensive foul on Jay Heath. His second drawn by Curtis Holland. High point battling on the road against BC. Five point eagle lead.
16-11 lead for Boston College over High Point with Eric Galanti, Bill Spaulding. Panthers have cut into this deficit. There's a travel. Wipe off the bucket for Rob Peterson. Turnover number nine for High Point. BC's defense still been really good. Offensively started four for five from the field. They're just two of 13 since. And Eric, one of the things we've noticed is it doesn't seem like they've really run a whole lot of offensive sets like we saw the first two games. There's a good example of it right there. Derek Thornton, long three. I mean, that's a pretty good look. Mitchell gets into the paint, kicking out. Rich Wayne does the same thing, just not falling there. But that's what BC has to get back to. There was a lot of full Princeton offense sequences in that USF game. Here's Emmanuel Izunabur inside for Peterson. Popovich cleans it up. But again, credit to High Point, because that's where veteran coach and Tubby Smith can ask his team to, look, clog the lane here and make BC do something different. Rich Wayne on the long two. No. Popovich had it and lost it. Izunabur comes away with it. Boston College hasn't made a basket in more than five minutes. Just the two points from Popovich free throws in that stretch. This is where it's hard for a team like Boston College right now. You have to find the discipline. Peterson banks it in, and it's a two-point game. Everything feels like it's running away right now the wrong direction. You have to be able to find the discipline to run the sets that the Eagles are trying to run and not force it in one-on-one -on -one situations. Thornton high, Arker goes. Or do that. But that's what Derek Thornton brings you. I mean, I mean, that's the kind of player, he is a kind of guy that when he can get to his ceiling, he can pick up the bucket when you need one. Rishwain might have gotten away with a foul and nearly had a steal. Tend to shoot for the Panthers. 0-2 after losses to William and Mary and Wofford. Mitchell jumps the passing lane. Look out, Stefan Mitchell, and one! Mitchell stays down after Jamal Wright came in hard at the end. Boy, how'd he get that one to go as he's back to his feet? Boy, you hope he is okay. That is such a good play on both ends and then just went right into the base of the backboard at the end of this. Late in the shot clock, so he's able to read that pass and then the foul comes hard at the end and Mitchell is going to have to shoot the free throws and then just took that hard extra bounce and, and that right side went right into the basket there. And that's a tough one. And They're, they're, they're going to go to the monitor here because, again, that was a really harsh foul as he had Jamal Wright come in. And the question here is, did he make a play at the basketball, or will this possibly be a flagrant as he came in hard, was clearly trying to foul Mitchell, and somehow Stefan Mitchell scored through all that contact. He is such a smart player. You know, we talked a lot about when he first arrived on campus, playing as son of a high school coach, and uh, playing such a high basketball IQ kind of game to be able to read that steal. Uh, they reviewed this pretty quickly, and here's what we're talking about with the flagrant rules. And it was very quick review. They already back said just personal foul on Jamal Wright, his first. Stefan Mitchell is still shaking out that left wrist. Will shoot the free throw. As we said, this is a real veteran crew here today, and, and they do a nice job getting through that one fairly quickly. There's Teddy Valentine, Roger Ayers, Tommy Morrissey. Valentine and Ayers have feels like worked almost every Final Four between the two of them over the last decade. Here's Denny Slay running the offense. One of those returners who didn't play all that much last year, just about two points per game for Slay last season. Tubby Smith said they, they need those veteran guys to step up and lead, but it's tough because even though they're veterans in terms of class, they're inexperienced too. Peterson's pass nearly taken away. Good effort from Jared Hamilton. Reminder, Jared's brother, Jerry Yiss, is out again today for the second straight game. Well, sometimes you're going to go through bad shooting games, but you have to be able to weather those storms defensively. And the one thing if you're Jim Christian you have to like is the fact that the Eagles, except for maybe one or two cuts, have been really strong intensity-wise on the defensive end, and they've kept them out to a lead at this point. Never lost it despite some good high point looks. Just three to shoot. Doesn't matter. Thornton takes it away. Mitchell pushing. 
Thornton. Offensive board goes. Jared Hamilton tips it in. The Eagles, who struggled a little bit early on against USF on the offensive boards, but good read that time by Hamilton. It's a clean look. John Michael Wright short. The high point really struggling to shoot it, just about 30%. The foul is called on the rebound on Wright. Great job by Hamilton. Got inside of really two, almost three defenders he got positioned against there for the putback. Those type of plays that don't slump, and one of the things that's encouraged folks around Boston College this year is they've played really hard defense. The, the intensity, the effort of this team is really high, and even if you have nights where you don't shoot the basketball well, if you continue to play with that level of defensive intensity, you feel like you've got a really good chance to end up coming away and, and winning the games you should win. And, you know, even if you're turning the ball over on the offensive end, if you create more than you turn over, that can, even though that's not the recipe you want the whole way in terms of your offensive turnovers, you can, you can do something with that. Mitchell at the front end of the one and one, back to a nine-point lead for Boston College. Eagles quietly on a 7-0 run over the last 90 seconds. They're playing really tight defensively with high point. There's no room for anyone to go. That forces Holland down to the end line. Freshman Julian Rishwain with the really good man-to-man -man defense. It's created by Mitchell there. I mean, he's so tight. Rishwain there as well. The two of them really tight on possession here. You see Rishwain right there. Mitchell helping out. There's just nowhere to go with the basketball. And if you listen to Jim Christian talk before this season, he said the freshmen that have come in have super high intensity, really good compete levels, and that's shown on the defensive end. Off the Thornton turnover, here's Peterson to the offensive end. Azuna Bor in trouble. Peterson, clean look, doesn't go. Thornton pushes Rishwain, passed up the three. Hamilton a clean look, it's good! Follow. Ten in a row for Boston College. Following the play there with Rich Wayne. The initial pass did not get handled, but he stayed with it, found that ball, and created the shot. Jared Hamilton scored 10 of Boston College's 26 today. Here's a Zunabor, deep two. Didn't go. Great job of defending there by Thornton. Took away the cut. Hamilton leaves it for Felder, and it's blocked out of bounds. Brings us to a timeout on the floor with three minutes to go in the first half. Eagles on a 10-0 run.
It's the second 10-0 run today for Boston College. Eagles started the game on a 10-0 run. Another 10-0 run over the last 3-0-8 to build a 12-point lead with Eric Galanti, Bill Spaulding. For BC, it hasn't been the cleanest offensive game, but once again, defensively, they've been outstanding. And that's kind of been the calling card through the first three games of this season. Big turnaround from some of those numbers where they struggled last year. Yeah, certainly the case so far. It's going to be a similar day in the turnover category. They've already created 12 of them from high point to this point. And, you know, it has to start on defense. Jim Christian talked a lot about it last year, but it's even more true this year because you do go through some offensive runs. This first half is a great example of it. They started really hot offensively. They've come out here over the last 308 and gone on this 10 nothing run. You can weather those storms in the interim by playing really good hard defense, and that's what BC's done. Again, 12 high point turnovers, and it really feels like a lot of them have been four, six Eagles steals. It's a high point team that while they've gotten off to a slow start this year, they have taken care of the basketball well. Coming in, they were only averaging 12 turnovers a game. And that last sequence is such a good example of it. High point, the turnover is not necessarily created on the initial pass, the initial good defensive play. Derek Thornton gets in the passing lane of a would-be cutter that would have created an open basket, and just nothing's there for high point. Rishwain kick out for Thornton. Still doesn't score today. Nifty crossover, and he draws the foul. Beg your pardon, he has two points from that good drive about four minutes ago, and now he'll head to the line. But this is going to be interesting to watch with Derek Thornton as he progresses through this year at Boston College. There are going to be days where he doesn't necessarily have that shot early on from the floor. Does he continue to get to the basket? Does he continue to put up points? And does he continue, maybe even more importantly, help by getting other people involved, creating assists? That was the positive today. Even though he's started with an over from the floor so far, he's creating assists with three of them pretty early on in this game, and that's what a leader does, even on days or maybe they don't lead the team in scoring. Well, and if you look back to his pedigree from his time at USC, he was more of a pass-first point guard. Averaged only about seven points a game, but averaged more than four assists per game playing with the Trojans. Three points today for Thornton. BC with its largest lead today, up 13. Eagles have done a great job on John Michael Wright, who scored only two points today. Touch foul is called on C.J. Felder. Right, playing with his high school teammate right now, Manuel Izunabor, also on the court. Both won a state championship last year at the high school level at Fayetteville Academy, along with Cameron Billups, who's also on this roster. And it's important to get North Carolina kids if you're high point. I mean, there is so much talent in the state. Sanchez follows his miss. Caden Sanchez on the board for the first time. And again, not that you're turning players who are going to go to Duke in North Carolina, but you can get some of those other players to want to stay close to home. High Point certainly is a beautiful campus, as you'll find across this country. Uh, it's a great place to want to go. New facilities and a big investment. Rish Wayne. No. Hey, you just think even at the mid-major level, just rattle off a few, but you've got all the UNCs, the UNC Asheville, the UNC Wilmingtons of the world. Elon, for example, also down in that neck of the woods. And a foul before the putback will send Curtis Holland to the free throw line. Maybe the most successful Davidson of all. Yes, those. yep. But you got to think having a guy like Tubby Smith on the bench helps when you go into a room and you say, okay, I've won more than 600 games. I've won a national championship. I've coached at Kentucky, Texas Tech, Minnesota, Memphis. Plus, you can't forget about how valuable it is that this is his alma mater. So we can talk about the experience of being a player here and, and really has a genuine love for this school. He's here because he wants to be here. And you want to bring up players from the state of North Carolina who might get overlooked by the big three? Well, Boston College knows something about that with Jerome Robinson and Kai Bowman. I mean, yep. Those are great examples of, now maybe those players certainly had ACC pedigree ahead of High Point even at that age, but that's an example of there is a world where Tubby Smith can walk into a room and get a kid like that to end up at High Point. Still 10-point lead for Boston College. Thornton staved a turnover, showing off some impressive handles. Ten to shoot for the Eagles. Thornton's fouled. DC in the bonus. He'll head to the free throw line. Tag the foul to Caden Smith, his first. Done a nice job getting to the line despite not being able to score from the floor so far in this game except for just the one bucket so and that's what we're talking about with Thornton get to the line find a way to get points 
One and one opportunity for Thornton after the ninth high point foul of this half. Eagles started up 10-0. Teams have played even 17-17 now. 18-17 Eagles since. Boy, it's amazing that you look at the outlook of this season, what you thought on paper, what you thought might be the case, and then you see Derek Thornton have that sort of twinkle of why he was a five-star recruit all those years ago going back to Duke. And it's, you know, even though it maybe it took a little bit of time to get to that level at the college game, there's no reason this can't be a five-star star recruit yep. coming in for Boston College. And boy, does that change things really quickly. Inside for Sanchez, nearly lost it. Finds the cutter, Jamal Wright headed to the free throw line. Good pass by Sanchez after nearly turning it over. Yeah, lost his footwork a little bit here, but did enough to stay with it, understand he had the size advantage against Heron to be able to throw that pass over the top. Foul goes on Thornton, his first free throws for senior Jamal Wright. And that's another case in terms of defending for Boston College. It's only their 16 fouls so far, so avoiding putting high point on the line any significant amount. Wright is looking to refine the form of his freshman season. Freshman year, he was second in the Big South in assists, nearly four per game, ninth in steals at more than one per game. Last year, played very limited minutes. He's got good pedigree, his uh, cousin, Emmett Smith. That works. And he's a lone senior, too, which matters. To have that kind of buy-in with still second-year head coach, it all funnels through yeah. from what the senior class does all the way down. 11-point lead for Boston College. Here's Nick Popovich. Had a very quiet first half, scoring just two points off a couple of free throws. Right on the driving dish. We have an offensive foul. Thornton stepped in and took a barrel charge from right. Yeah, it was a little bit of a late whistle. There had to be something there with as much contact as there was. Thornton, yeah, he's in good position. I mean, he is still outside of the arc. Got a little bit banged up on the play, but it's a good job of taking one for the team there in Thornton. And that's, again, what you love to see. He's a fifth-year grad transfer. You know, you get some grad transfers who are only worried about their numbers, their stats, because they're trying to get to the next level. Derek Thornton's been, been all about helping this BC team win, according to Jim Christian, since he's gotten here. and That's a leadership type of play. Oh, good feed. Popovich to Hamilton. You mentioned Princeton offense. That was patented Princeton offense. And Popovich's ability to pass the ball from that spot on the floor, one of the improvements of his game. He's always shown that level of passing, but it's really been elite so far this year. Back to a 13-point Eagle lead. The six to shoot right. Sanchez too strong. Ten seconds left in the half. The Eagles have matched their largest lead today. Popovich at the rack. BC by 15. Thornton nearly stole it at the buzzer. Eagles go into halftime with their largest lead of the first half, thanks to back-to-back -back plays by Nick Popovich. What a job here. The big man firing the pass to Hamilton. The Eagles roll at the end of the half to a big lead on high point.
We head towards half two, 33-18. Boston College up on high point with Eric Galanti, Bill Spaulding. Glad to be with you. You know, this is the type of game that you got to find a way to, to grind out of your Boston College. Shots aren't particularly falling, but still the defense has really allowed them to jump out to this 15-point lead. They've competed throughout and have made life very difficult on high point on the offensive end. Well, perhaps most importantly is that points off turnovers stat, stat and specifically that high point has a zero in that category. When you look at that Boston College game against USF, they turned it over and USF converted in the first half of that game. Even in bad stretches today where the Eagles turned it over a little bit, High Point was not able to convert the Eagles strong defensively. And then that 12-25 shooting, it's kind of a three-parter where you had good stretch early, good stretch late, a little bit slow in the middle, but they continued to get to the foul line. They weathered that storm and put themselves in a nice position to try to finish this game off. For those of you who, like me, were, were not math majors, that's 7 of 24 for High Point. That's 29% from the floor. You mentioned the points off turnovers, 11 for Boston College. That was a big concern for Tubby Smith. He said against Wofford, was really disappointed with the fact they gave up 22 points off turnovers. And that was a game that was a 28-point game. So you throw those points off turnovers out, it would have been a much different looking game against the Terriers. BC in white, high point in black. Eagles up 15, led by 12 points from Jared Hamilton in the first half. Nick Popovich got off to a slow start, but closed strong and seems to come out with some good energy here to start the second half. There, and really for a bunch of sequences here, there have been times where maybe they haven't gotten the rebound, but the Eagles have done a really good job following their own shot off of misses every single time, and that kind of speaks to intensity, working hard, everything that we're talking about with what this BC is trying to make their mantras for the course of this year. Derek Thornton nearly had another steal. Eagles had seven steals in the first half. All into Bryant Randleman picked up two early fouls and barely played in the first half. See if the offense runs smoother for the Panthers with their freshman point guard back in there. Down low to Cliff Thomas, too strong. There's Popovich with the rebound. Thornton on the accelerator. Finds Mitchell running the lane and one. It's Derek Thornton's fourth assist. Stephon Mitchell's a free throw away from double figures. Well, we didn't get to talk about it at the end of halftime for the buzzer beater, but it was a no-look pass from Thornton to set it up. And then here once again, it's going to be another no-look pass from Thornton. Watch as he gets four different black jerseys to come to him and allows him to set up the pass. Mitchell short on the free throw. Been the best offensive game so far this year for Stephon Mitchell. And you know the rebounds are going to be there for Mitchell. You know the defense is going to be there for Mitchell. Once he consistently puts together the scoring on the offensive end as well, that's that's really at this point an added bonus. But he's a guy who spent tireless hours in the gym, BC's hardest worker in the offseason, to try and improve that offensive game. He and Popovich are both so good with the extra outside of scoring, his ability to pass that even when those are your two bigs on the floor, the ball never stops because those two can pass the ball so well, especially what Mitchell's able to do in the rebounding game and the passing game. 18 to shoot for the Panthers. Here's John Michael Wright, high points top scorer, held the two points in the first half. Holland for three. Has been able to get one of those to fall. Sanchez has it ripped away clean. Mitchell's there. Clean look in the corner. Jay Heath. It pops out. Mitchell recycles for BC. Popovich. Heath follows for two. Good work on the boards all the way through for Boston College. They got two extra cracks at it. Off of a couple of missed threes, and it's finished by Heath. The Eagles have scored the first four of the second half. Sean Michael Wright nearly lost it. Holland again in the corner. That's well short. Shots just have not fallen, even the open ones today for the Panthers. That was one of the things Tubby Smith talked about. He said that, you know, with this really young group, sometimes guys aren't in the right position. And sometimes they are, but they still need everything to go right to score consistently. Need to move the ball well, need to 
set screens. And uh, today just seems like the offense has been a little bit out of sorts. And you credit Boston College's defense for that. And it's not always defense in terms of defending shots, but they have been really tight with high point. Every time the Panthers have tried to find ways to pass the ball wherever they go on the floor, and it just makes it difficult to feel like you have enough space to run the offense you want. Thornton. Still cold from the outside. Thornton 0 for 5 from 3 today. Stop and pop Randleman. No. Offensive foul on Sanchez. Pushing off. That's his second. Going to be a challenging year for this high point team. Tubby Smith said it, you know, he thinks he's got the freshman group and the young group that can build into something special, but he joked that at his age, it's hard to be patient. You want things to happen now. Well, there's so much development. You talk about the new basketball facility as well, the new arena. Good look from Jay Heath. He has four man. quick ones in this half. As part of the development here in play, Heath, a couple of really strong plays, following up rebounds, getting into the basket. He's a really solid player here for Jim Christian. That is straight out of bounds. Randleman missed with right. A really interesting take from Tubby Smith as we look back to that little floater from Heath. Said that the challenge for him and his staff, especially early in the year, is you know, you want your players to do everything right. And it's hard to be patient. But at the same time, when you go through the growing pains, he said it's on this coaching staff to make sure that they don't pound down these players too much, that they keep them positive. They, they keep building them up even when they're struggling early. Mitchell is wide open. Offensive board to Hamilton. He's taken down by a foul. John Michael Wright picks up his second ball will recycle to Boston College. It is so hard to trust the process when the process doesn't necessarily yield wins early on, but that's one of the benefits of having someone like Tubby Smith because the question becomes, can his name still resonate? And the fact that he has won and he's won at multiple different places and, uh, you know, you look at his resume all the way down, he's never really had bad years, even quote-unquote seasons that maybe you could call underachieving. They're not bad years, they're still winning years. So you have to kind of trust and buy in that he has the philosophy and the formula to turn around and get to the point where High Point wants to be. Well, the Eagles are just wearing out the offensive glass in this half. Stephon Mitchell headed to the line after a second effort. Yeah, I mean, you think about Tubby Smith's career, which is at this point spanned 28 seasons, and you look at his year by year, he's only had two losing seasons his first two years at Texas Tech. Even at high point last year, it was a winning mark of 16 and 15 in a transition year. And obviously it's a few years removed, certainly from Texas Tech, them getting to the Final Four, but it's all part of the process of building that group up, and it goes back to Tubby Smith and what he did there. Stefan Mitchell in double figures for the first time today. He scored 10. He goes along with nine rebounds today. Boy, the Panthers so out of sorts right now. Have not scored this half. Sanchez sails it into the bench. The Eagles have done a great job coming out in the second half and just trying to put this game away before the other 16 timeout. USF closer throughout than we are right now, but it was really inspired play coming out of the break. Oh, Thornton up and under for two. John Michael Wright knocks Thornton down. Inside, Popovich takes it away, and Thornton stays down. Brings us to a timeout on the floor. The training staff will check on Derek Thornton. BC has opened up the half on a 9-0 run to lead by 24.
BC by 24. Just before the break, Derek Thornton went down. Athletic training staff looking at his ankle. See his left leg and then right leg slip out, left leg first, and then came down on the right ankle. He is not in the game right now, but he is sitting on the bench. Went down the tunnel a little bit, got looked at pretty quickly, walked back to the bench under his own power, and at least seems to be okay right now, just the left of Coach Christian. So certainly hope that uh, he is okay. Thornton's gotten off to such a good start for Boston College. 23 points against Wake Forest, 22 more against South Florida. Today, seven points, but also five assists to go along with a couple of steals, a couple of rebounds. BC is on a 9-0 run to start this half. If you stretch it back to the final three minutes of the first half, it's a 15-1 run. It's another one of those extended stretches where High Point has struggled to score. Tubby Smith said that the, the biggest struggle with a young team like this is consistency. You might get 15 or 20 good minutes when you really need 35 to 40 to win a basketball game. It's a young group for Boston College right now, too. Both Heath and Felder, along with Rich Schwain, three freshmen on the floor. Heath, no. Popovich fumbled the rebound. Pretty good touch there. Just didn't fall for Heath, but it was a good move to hold up without going in and fouling. Hamilton looking for the steal, got caught up with Slay, committed the foul. First foul on Jared Hamilton. I like this mix right now. You get three freshmen on the floor, but you also have two seniors with Popovich and Hamilton. Yeah, a little bit of a different look as Jim Christian still evaluates rotations. There are going to have to be times where Thornton and Mitchell are kind of point guard and point forward in some ways or off the floor resting. Manuel Izunabor left it low. Only been playing organized basketball for four years. Moved from Lagos, Nigeria to the U.S. as a 15-year-old. Rishwain nails a long two. That would have been a three-pointer last year. Still a heck of a move. Here's Hamilton flying in. Looked like Azunabor had a dunk in front of him. Wow. That is some kind of play to not foul and get all ball from behind. Keeps the goose egg on the board for high point. Rishwain too deep. That's a long two, and it misses way short. Jamal Wright comes up empty. You go back to Rish Wayne, and there's a time you learn as a freshman going back from what's the good three, staying in rhythm, and what's the force three, and that one a little bit out. But how about this block coming back, and all ball, impressive look from Hamilton. Oh, he came to his unibor. There was no one around him. He thought finally high point would get on the board here in the second half. Hamilton flies in. What a nice game today, 12 points. Rebound, a block shot, helping BC out by 26. Rishwain draws the touch foul, goes on Jamal Wright, his third. Most of the fouls we've seen today have been fouls the past few seasons as well. We have not seen much in terms of the new emphasis on the post where we expect to see a lot more whistles this year. You just can't make as much contact down there when you're defending the post. Yeah, I think that's certainly going to come up as you get into conference play a little bit more and those tough, physical, old-school, biggie-style games in the new ACC. Othello Smith has checked in for the first time for high point. Big, lanky center. Mitchell with some open space in front. Good feed. Kamari Williams is on the board. Freshman from Sandy Springs, Maryland, whose dad, Walt, played 11 years in the NBA. Helps extend the Boston College lead to 28. I mean, again, that's the basketball IQ of Mitchell being able to find the open chain with two defenders coming on him. Panthers still haven't scored this half. It's a 13-0 run for Boston College. Goes off Slay's knee. It's turnover. Williams wants more. Offensive board, Heath. Jay Heath is a workhorse. He's been able to slip in there a few times on the offensive boards. Peterson and the Trout, that's an air ball. Well, we have an Othello in the game for High Point, and this is turning into a Shakespearean tragedy on offense for the Panthers. There's a foul on the shot going against Rishwain. 
And back to high point. Going back earlier, the double team comes. Mitchell finds the open man for Williams on the cut. Such a good look. And then Heath underneath does not have the size advantage there, but he got position. And then one of the odder fouls I've seen, Rishwain on the kick out, finishing his three-pointer. Upended Peterson, who was defending him, and the foul goes on the shooter, Rishwain. It's a James Harden-like, right? 15-0 run to start the half for Boston College. Rishwain has the steal. That's turnover number 19 for the Panthers. Heath Floater, that's goaltending. Already on the way down. Othello Smith called for the goaltend. Yeah, I'm not sure that shot was falling, but it was clearly on the way down. Let's look at it. Might it have may been. have been. Yep. Better look at it from the side. Well, he's up to 11 points today to go along with two rebounds. So he started with 18, had six against South Florida, back into double figures again today. Well, again, you look at the positive of this, and to be able to do this without Thornton having a huge scoring day and still be up by as much as the Eagles are up, that is a positive sign for this BC group. On the interior is Zunabor, well defended by Felder, and it's a shot clock violation. CJ Felder just held his ground inside. Yeah, there was just nowhere to go, and High Point was a little unaware of the shot clock there. It's a veteran coach and Tubby Smith letting his group try to play this out. He knows the reality of where they are right now and serves more to allow this group to play through some struggles early in the year than continue to call timeouts. That's a good point. It's a 17-0 BC run to start the half and no timeouts yet from Tubby Smith. Kraljevic into the game for BC. Williams clean in the corner. Felder battling for the rebound, comes away with it. Eagles just two for 17 from three. That's the, the one offensive negative for Boston College. Rishwain, make it two for 18. It's been good luck, it's just not falling today. Jamal Wright could feed down low, and a traveling Ooh. violation. Type of night it's been for high points. Still looking for their first points of the second half. It's a 10-minute scoring drought for High Point. Last basket came with 1.16 left to go in the first half. Boston College has scored the opening 17 points of this second half to build a 32-point lead. In for C.J. Felder. Nifty move. Felder blocked. Cliff Thomas on the help got there. You know, Thomas only listed at 6'8 on the card, but he certainly not just plays taller than that, but he seems taller than that quite literally out there. And uh, he has the capability to do that. He's had a couple of really strong defensive plays in the paint. Well, down 32, you still feel like these are valuable minutes for high point. A team playing so many freshmen and inexperienced players. You got to use this time early. John Michael Wrights had a brutal night for him. This is one of those welcome to college basketball moments. Had two great games to start. Big South Freshman of the Week, and today just two points. Again, sometimes you credit bad shooting, sometimes it's defense, and that time it means just the defense of C.J. Felder. He's got a significant size advantage there of right, but you still have to use it. 
Wright's trying to peel away there on a cut that usually allows shooters to open up, and Felder just does not let him get free for any space there for that shot. Rishwain wants three. DC's missed their last 10 from three today, just two of 19 overall. But the defense has not suffered even with the up and down shooting night. Wright lost it out. That's turnover number 22 for High Point. That should have been nothing from three on either side. Just four total. High point scoring drought now over 11 and a half minutes. They've gone through 10 minutes in this second half without a bucket. BC scored 17 points in that stretch. Here's Luka Kraljevic. A little bit of a Kai Bowman impression up top today with the, the new do. Kraljevic! Is that a Kai Bowman impression with the finish as well? You make moves like that, your hair can be whatever <laughs> color you want. A little dipsy do inside to put BC up 34. High point is on the board here in the second half, ending a 12-minute drought. Thomas and one, and it draws a derisive cheer from the crowd at Conti. Back to Kraljevic. That's hitting the, the spin button on the video game control right there. And what a move gotten to a point here at Conti where you felt like even the Boston College fans were pulling for high point to, to get on the board. Cliff Thomas's first three points today and a 12-minute scoring drought. Thomas feels like, and we just mentioned it with the size, that he's got some ability down there. He's done some things defensively. High point can find a way to get it into him in the paint. He's got a different kind of size advantage that could be a factor in the conference play. Zach Mark, 11.48 without a point for high point. Rishwain follows his miss, has it stripped clean. Again, it's not a make, but it's another followed miss, strong by BC. Right, and nobody's home. One of the things that Tubby Smith said with so many talented freshmen is one of the biggest things you have to learn early on is that it's a lot harder than high school. You have to run the system, you have to be where you're supposed to be, whereas in high school you might have just been able to use your athleticism and blow by people. Right, and it's that second point that you can't just do that, that you have to stay in your sets. And it's what Boston College went through earlier today. Remember we were talking about it. Early on, they were running those sets. High Point did a decent job taking those sets away, and it's about staying with the patience to continue to run your offense and not just playing hero, hero ball and not just forcing. And that, you have to learn that. It's a difficult thing. Boston College able to go deep into its rotation today, and that's valuable. Got a big game coming on Saturday. It's a travel on Caden Sanchez. Belmont is here on Saturday as part of that Gotham Classic, and it's a Belmont team that's really, really good and a, a good candidate to be one of those Cinderella teams that goes to the second weekend in the NCAA tournament this year. Maybe even Cinderella and fair anymore for how often yep. they've been in the tournament and the job that, that they have done down there. It'll be a really interesting game on Saturday. Belmont and then St. Louis in a couple of weeks. A couple of really strong, uh, quote-unquote, mid-major teams coming in. With Eastern Washington mixed in in between a week from today. Freshman Jay Heath, another floater. Follows his miss, no. Follows it again, he's blocked. His effort relentless, but the Panthers hold. John Michael Wright ends his scoring drought. It's a three-pointer for Wright. Nice stroke from the corner from Wright. You know, you go back to the point you made. Look at this non-conference schedule that Jim Christian has assembled. And, and maybe not. there's not one super highly ranked team on there. But uh, across the board, USF, a team that looks like it's going to challenge the American. And then after the games we mentioned, you have DePaul, you have Northwestern here mixed in with the ACC game early. This is a non-conference schedule that's going to allow Boston College to build through the year. With 10 to shoot, Randleman picks up the blocking foul call on Heath. Now, one thing you can say about Jay Heath is that he's going to go to the whistle and maybe through the whistle. Relentless effort again here. Eagles by 28.
28-point lead for Boston College. This is the first of four games as part of the Gotham Classic, a tournament that used to end in New York City for the last four years, been played on campus sites. So we'll also see Belmont, Eastern Washington, and St. Louis as part of that tournament. DePaul and Richmond on the schedule. A road trip to Richmond, not an easy place to go win a game, even though that's a program that's been up and down over the last couple of years. Yeah, that St. Louis game is the showcase game of this tournament. Should be a real good one on ACC. Now, I'm fascinated to see what happens on Saturday. Good mid-major program in Belmont, the type of program that's always going to try to be a team that outworks everybody that they play. Matches up with BC because that's exactly what the Eagles are trying to do and be that kind of team in the ACC. So it's a big test early on in the year. And you really feel like first couple of games, Belmont, St. Louis, DePaul going down the list, Northwestern, there's tests. There's tests to pass on this non-conference schedule. It really feels well assembled by Jim Krishna. Free throws for freshman Bryant Randleman from Durham. So there's a North Carolina All-State player in high school. Randleman makes them both. Didn't get to see him at full strength today, just based on the early foul trouble. He hardly played in the first half. It is quietly an 8-0 run for High Point after they'd gone more than 11 minutes without a basket. Boston College hasn't scored in the last 220. They really want to try to finish this game out. But, and again, you know, Tubby Smith does not use his timeouts. He allows his team to try to play through this as a young team, and they are starting to here in the latter stages. Eagles also going with a young group right now as three freshmen are in the lineup. Clean look, John Michael Wright. Looking to follow his miss, he gets it back. Good feed. Layup doesn't fall, Rob Peterson left it short. No, it didn't go, but a solid play by Wright, kind of colliding with Heath on that rebound attempt, and Wright just continued to work to get that offensive board. Heron penetrates. Heath, clean look. Nails the three. Boston College's first three of the second half. 14 more points today for Heath. Yeah, maybe the one number that jumps out a little bit for BC, only three of 21 from behind the arc, but you're just going to have days like that sometimes. Heron finds the rebound. Boy, I know it's only three games in, but you feel like Heath's going to be one of those guys who ends up being a recruiting steal. Maybe underrated 32nd shooting guard in his class. Rattles out for Williams. Well, you make the comparison to Winston Tabs because they come out of the same area just outside Washington, D.C. Some crossover in terms of where they played. And we saw it from Winston Tabs in a limited sample last year before the injury. And, and he perfect spot up in that corner. Got to be careful tiptoeing there with the <laughs> extended three-point arc this year. Hey, it's better tight. not better not be one of those guys with like size 23 right. feet if you're trying to shoot the three-pointer in the corner. Foul on Luka Kraljevic. 14 points for Heath today. That's coming off 18 against Wake Forest in the opener. Six last time out. Heath exits here. Rich Wayne looking for the steal. He's on the end line. Get the feeling we've likely seen the end of Thornton, Heath, Popovich, and Hamilton today with that big game against Belmont coming up in the 29-point lead. And it is worth noting that even though Derek Thornton did not come back after that scary-looking ankle injury when he, when he kind of came off a little bit slow with the ankle, went down the tunnel for the moment, he is on the bench right now. It's not like he's gone to the locker room. Heron rattles out. Yeah, he's looked fine. Has had no trainer checking on him really since the moments right after the injury. High Point also has more games to play in this tournament. In fact, their next game is also against Belmont. They'll play at Belmont on Monday. Kamari Williams with the steal. Looking for the trailing Rishwain, who wasn't expecting the pass. Turnover numbers much better, though, for Boston College today. Only 10 turnovers. Yeah, and it looked like really early on it might be an issue. And again, I, you know, you think you use the eye test and you watch the last couple of games, and turnovers were a complete non-factor against Wake Forest, though. 
even though the number was a big number against USF, it didn't feel like a factor when you watched the game after the first 12 minutes. Same story here. He had a couple of them early, but after really the first five or six minutes, just never felt like a factor. And that's the most important thing with the turnovers. A shooting foul, and it goes. Denny Slay gets the roll. He'll have a chance for a three-point play. Fouls on Chris Heron. Slay out of Woodbridge, Virginia. High Point still, you know, in the scheme of Division I basketball, a young Division I program. This is their 20th year, debuting in 1999. They went from the NAIA to Division II in 1995, so they were an NAIA team back in the Tubby Smith era. Wright missed it. A team that feels like they should have made the NCAA tournament in the last five years as Slay hits a three. From 2013 to 2016, they won at least a share of the conference tournament every year in the Big South, in the, in the regular season. Share of the Big South title. Never won a conference tournament. Just super unlucky during that stretch. Heron driving, left it behind. You know, it's a great example of why there are certainly some proponents that the automatic bid should not come from the conference tournament, it should come from the regular season, especially in the one bid leagues. Williams the takeaway. Here's Heron in front, and it's run down from behind. Well done by Jamal Wright. Well, 3.45 to go in this one. Boston College firmly in control on their way to a 3-0 and start. High point showing some spunk down the stretch. They've scored 13 of the last 16 to pull within 24. Boston College firmly in control. Well, we told you for high point, so young this early. These are valuable minutes to, to find a way to grind this out, especially ahead of a couple more really tough games. They've got Belmont, St. Louis next two in this Gotham Classic, then Eastern Washington, who they'll host at home for Greensboro and North Florida to round out their next five. But I mean, Belmont and St. Louis back-to-back -back after following Boston College. And you throw Wofford, a team that made that run in the NCAA tournament last year in the previous game. Tubby Smith did not schedule like this was a team with tons of inexperience. Yeah, it's a tough slate, certainly, for this high-point team. And, and they're going to grow, and they're going to continue to learn from this. And, and the reality is, in, in the kind of league that they are in, it is about growth to conference time, yep. both individually this year, but also on the whole of it. So tuning up with difficult non-conference, if they can be games you learn from, it's important. And he's realistic about that. When we, we talk to him, he, he's like, you know, we, we know we're not going to be an at-large team. We know that that's not really in the cards for a team from the Big South. So the, the goal is to turn yourself into a consistent contender in the Big South Conference. And with that in mind, non-conference really 
doesn't matter all that much outside of getting you ready for conference play. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Kraljevic looking to show off some range. Luka Kraljevic, the junior from Slovenia, has scored four. It's a little bit of an odd, quote unquote, blowout, if you can use that word in this one, because the Eagles only have 57 points right now. It's, you know, it's not a, a significant amount, but I think you're gonna see these kinds of games because we've seen it through three games. Boston College's best offense has been closer to your old school Princeton sets than it has been run and gun, like maybe the last couple of years when you have guards like Bowman and like Robinson. That could change a little bit when Thornton, you know, is really on his game and you can push things a little bit, but it's important to be able to win games this way, and it makes sort of those top-tier ACC teams, you don't want to play games like this because it's so against what teams like Carolina and Duke, maybe not Virginia, but some of those other ACC teams want to do. Yeah, we've alluded to it a bit. There's Rishwain finding a rebound. But even though everyone wants offense, like you enjoy watching good offense, if you have to be really good at one, either offense or defense, Defense much more reliable. You're not going to go into shooting slumps on defense like you are on the offensive end. Just ask Tony Bennett how that works for his Cavaliers. Kamari Williams clean, missed it. Well, it comes with the second piece, and it is you don't go through slumps if you stay with the intensity defensively that you need every single time down. That John, is hard to guard against. John Michael Wright followed his miss momentarily before Rishwain took it back. VC's held high point to 23% shooting, 11 for 47. And again, forced at this point, 27 turnovers. Kraljevic double teamed. How about that pass? And Felder hammers it down. Luka Kraljevic has had two of the best plays today. I mean, an extra beat there, and he is falling over and gets knocked out of bounds, but that is some kind of play to keep his feet. Felder jumps the passing lane. And it's a jump ball, even here in the late stages. Still going for it. Let's watch this again from Kraljevic. What a pass. Boston College giving as much runtime as they can to these freshmen that will play in key roles. But now we see a move down the bench a bit to get some of the Boston College walk ons and deep rotational players into the game. This is Andrew Kenny, a freshman from Seattle, a player that the coaching staff really likes. They think that he has the ability to, to work his way into the rotation. And now the walk ons make their way toward the scorer's table next. Offensive foul called on Kraljevic. So here come Sam Holtz, Matt DeLuccio, Will Chakowitz, and Jonathan Noel. Well, a heck of a job today by main rotation group for Jim Christian, and uh, you had guys like Heath and Hamilton and Mitchell lead the way today scoring. Thornton with seven, but guys who really stepped up big against USF, different ones today, still same result. Yeah, Hamilton's 12 in the first half got the Eagles going. Heath leads with 14, and the Eagle defense was phenomenal today. Denny Slay with nine points now leads all scorers for high point. An opportunity for one of these guys to get a shot up here. Looking for the lob over the top. Kenny couldn't get to it. Sam Holtzi, the junior from Sherman Oaks, California, threw it up. That would have brought this crowd to its feet in a hurry. Holtz was a high school teammate of Rich Schwain. They both played at Notre Dame and Sherman Oaks. That's two years where Schwain's older. Lane nearly lost it under some good pressure from Jonathan Noel. And this BC unit forces a turnover. And that turnover comes with a 10 second difference between game clock and shot clock, which means this Eagle group gets one more opportunity to stick it in the tin. Going another alley-oop. 
you want to see a nice layup here, right? Clean look. Rattles out. Dogged pursuit from Jackowitz. And it's a jump ball. Making the most of the last two minutes of this game. Jackowitz down to the hardwood. Arrow does give it back to high point. Well, obviously, fun time for the walk-on speed here right now. But this is what it is for Boston College this year. It's defensive intensity all the way through, no matter where you are. And you, you see it top to bottom on the roster. Chris Cheeks, one of the assistant coaches for Boston College, fighting off a smile there on the sidelines after that effort. You want to talk about effort? How about the defensive effort for Boston College? They hold high point to just 33 points. The Eagles improved to 3-0 with a 59-33 win. Really impressive work all the way through for this Boston College team. You can see it. This is a blowout, but done in a defensive fashion, holding high points to only 33 points. Eagles do enough offensively, weathered a couple of struggle points in their storm offensively, and just never stopped working on the defensive end. And these are the kinds of wins that you want to pick up this kind of year, and the Eagles get the job done today. Boston College is 3-0. High point falls to 0-3. Big one coming up Saturday here at Conti for Boston College as they take on Belmont. For Eric Glanty, our entire crew, Bill Spalding saying so long from the Conti Forum where the final score is BC 59, high point 33.